What's up? What's up? It's me. It's me, the L E E B O Y T V, back with another episode of the Prime Nostalgia Podcast with the main man, Prime. You know, that's the P R I M E. I'm going to go ahead and spell it out for him because, uh, yeah, I don't know. How you feeling today, man? You good? Everything what's good? Up, what's up? Yep, yep, yep. Crit- oh, so, uh, if y'all don't know, uh, look, can, can we put your name out there? Did, did the people yeah. know? Yeah, the people, they should. <laughs> we got. <laughs> Prime, aka Chris, but it took me a long time to even find out this man's name. We, that's a whole nother story. In fact, if y'all, it's not able, like it's not like I kept it a secret. By the way, <laughs> I just it's like, you okay. just don't never say. It. But yes, Prime, aka Chris, and we got a very special guest today who also goes by the name Chris, also goes by the name Jonesy. That's what I've been calling him, Jonesy. And um, in, in fact, he, I know one of one of the other name that you got going on is Wade. If you guys, you know, <laughs> if you guys can recognize this face, you guys ought to know where that was from. But when you first told me you was Wade, bro, you know I had a whole different Wade in, in, in mind, right? There's yes, a different dancer Wade that's also it's... in this same project we're going to be talking about today. Yep. But I was like, you didn't bust up my man MJ, did you? Because uh, we're going to have a great. <laughs> I'm like, wait. <laughs> He was like, man, I'm way from uh, you got I'm, from the movie. Go ahead and spill the beans from you got served. And I'm like, yep. wait, which way? Because I got beef with one of y'all, but it ain't, <laughs> it ain't this way. It ain't this way. <laughs> but uh, everybody, this is Chris Jonesy, a.k.a. Way from you got served and many projects. We'll be talking about that as well. Say what's up to the people, Chris. What's up, everybody? Yep. This is uh, Chris Jones, a.k.a. Jonesy or a.k.a. Wade. Uh, reporting to you from my backyard that's kind of getting decorated for the holidays but i'm just glad to be here with you guys prime and good old lee boy here just hanging out and gonna <laughs> gonna wrap it up i guess we're gonna t- we're gonna chat on some film stuff i guess hell yeah, yeah we got well you know on the prime nostalgia podcast we discuss all things nostalgia me and jonesy actually met face to face a couple of weeks ago on a video shoot you guys will see that soon where i'm acting a damn fool i'm gonna just go ahead and put that out there right now <laughs> I, I got to uh, get some of my acting chops back and it was hella fun but uh jonesy was very uh was very gracious to let his use his spot uh where he has uh, dope venues including an uh, open mic night for comedy and we'll be discussing everything he's got going on in that backyard he's sitting in right now but like i said we met face to face and you're just a cool dude man i was like we gotta have you on the podcast asap asap well, ASAP. I, well, I, well I heard i heard you were gonna be a part of the uh, of the video shoot through the artist that uh you know you can release that whatever you got to talk about but um i heard that you were going to be coming on this and the first thing he says he's like yo i got my boy leon he used to be on all that and I went, all that. I mean, I'm showing my age now. I'll be 40 next year. But I was like, yo, all that is taking it back. Antenna started perked up. Yeah. You know, you know so I was like, yo, I'm anxious. Let me meet this homie. Well, game recognized game because as you are a fan of my project, I am definitely a big fan of your main project. Not the only. In, in fact, this guy's got a couple of credits we'll definitely get to discuss. But as you guys have heard, he's mostly known as Wade from You Got Served. And there may be. Uh, there may be a sequel or something popping up. We'll get into that later. So you guys gonna have to stick around to see what's going on with the sequel. But this is the white man with the spike hair and the tan right here. You was like a, literally the original cultural appropriator. Uh, how's, <laughs> how does it feel to, to be known as the, the, the goon, the what? bully, and you guys served that literally tried to take out the whole crew, <laughs> had no love for Lil Saint, didn't give a damn about Lil Saint. <laughs> feeling moves got sunny over to your side man you was a master recruiter man you got some skills <laughs> we had you know it's really it's really funny i i hate to say this but every every film i've ever done since the starting of my career and i'm sure we'll get into it but i've always played the bad guy mm-hmm. the villain the, the nemesis it's it's always been that way and and you got served you know i already knew i was going to play the bad guy and you know with the blonde spikes you brought it up the guy with the tan from orange county all you have to say <laughs> It's crazy, man, because when I, I've had to bleach my hair back again for a handful of films and even with a little bit of highlights and not a joke, not even kidding. If I put the blonde in my hair and people see me, it's a wrap. They're like, oh, you're that guy. And all you have to Wade. say is the blonde spiky guy from You Got Served. They're like, that's Wade. You're the asshole from Orange County. And I'm like, yep, that would be me. So, oh, you know, it was it kid, was it felt, yeah. it felt it felt normal to play the bad guy. I like the nemesis. You know, I like being the the. Uh, the antagonist because it's always interesting it changes it up a bit and everybody remembers the bad guy you do you know what i'm saying so absolutely absolutely yeah there's no forgetting your character he's literally 
He's literally the nemesis. You have a friend, I think his name's Max or something. He gets yep. down to you guys are a duo, but it's your crew. You do the major recruiting, which I said, you got skills. You're like, <laughs> goddamn, the Lakers out here when it come to recruiting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> almost took out the whole B2K and Marcus Houston. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, so we'll, we'll definitely get into some of the specifics about uh, you got served in just a little bit. In fact, we'll, we'll save some of that for the second half. So you make sure you guys stick around. But I wanted to talk about your upbringing because um, I believe you're from, is it Myrtle Beach, South yeah, Carolina? Good, good memory, brother. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Yeah, born mm-hmm. and raised a Southern kid from the East Coast, um, which I love having Southern roots. I won't lie about that. I come from a good, humble place growing up, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, please and thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, but my whole family is an industry family. So uh, both my parents were singers, dancers, actors back in their day. And uh, growing up, my father had a talent agency. My mom had a dance studio and together they owned a performing arts school. So it was kind of meant to be. I started when I was real young and um, yeah, I did, you know, I did a lot of work on the East coast, travel back and forth to LA and New York as a child. Uh, But it wasn't, to be honest with you, it wasn't until I turned 18 in 2000 and moved out to LA and um you know, already, thank God at the time I already had an agent. Uh, my father had transferred me over to a new, to new representation. Um, immediately got my, my dance agent, got my theatrical agent, commercial agent. I just went right, right down the line and got everything I needed. And I started doing the grind just like everybody else does in LA. You know, um, mm-hmm. I was a little, a little blessed for the fact that I had done some work pre, you know, previously I'd done a lot of, as you and I were chatting before, I did a lot of movie of the weeks and pilots and TV shows and commercials on the East coast. Um, but I was still, I was still green. I got told by a many a casting directors, man. Um, Joseph Middleton, I love you. He's a huge casting director. He's done a ton in the game in the game. And he was the first one. He was like, yeah, we got to slow that accent down a little bit and lose it. And we got to get you out of the green zone. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And, um, ever since he, he, he popped off with me on that one, it was just like a spiral. But to be honest with you, um, you know, I've been doing this game in this industry my whole life. But it wasn't until you got served when I auditioned, and I'm sure you're going to ask some more questions, but I will say you got served was the one that I was able to meet both passions, dance and acting. Right. And, um, you know, once that hit, to be honest with you, it took my, my credibility and my career from like a two or a three straight to like a six or a seven. And then from there, it's just blossomed, man. But you got served is, it's my baby. It still is to this day. And I have nothing but, but thanks for Chris Stokes for giving me the opportunity and chance, man, because it broke everything. It was amazing. And there's a, a whole slew of dancers out here on the West Coast that thank that particular project for blowing up the scene. And, uh, you know, we look to that. And uh, I would say the Rise movie, um, yep. specifically for, you know, us clowners and crumpers. And I definitely was part of that community. Uh, you know, we looked up to these films quite a bit. And so, all, like you said, definitely a blessing to be a part of that. But you mentioned that you, you both of your passions met up during this project so you you would say that you were equally passionate about acting and dancing yeah I would say that you know I never to be honest with you I I I danced my whole life I did the competitive dancing I didn't even start this is so sad to say but I didn't start doing any any style of like hip-hop till I was like 13 14 15 it just wasn't something it was basically it was a culture it was a it was a street thing it was an you know an urban thing that you really only found in certain places. And if you were in a club, but I was too young to be in a club, you know what I mean? Right. So obviously I listened to hip hop music, but the dancing style was nothing that I was really into till later. Um, but dancing was something I knew was going to be a part of my life for a long time. I just didn't think on ever taking it to a professional level. And when I came to LA, I was like, well, when in Rome kind of deal, I might as well get a dance agent. I love to do it. So I got my dance agent and I was like, well, let's see what happens. And believe it or not, I started actually before I booked my first actual theatrical gig in L.A., I booked a couple of dance gigs. So I was like, well, why not? Let's just roll with both. You know what I mean? Keep as many pokers in the fire. And that's how it strolled out. And I mean, if you check out this man's INDB, you got dancer all over it from uh, (laughs) Jay Leno. You you know, you have a bunch of credits uh, dancing um, and you know, I think, and I, like I said, I was very inspired um, by dancing and I, I was a dancer in my own right. I never had a dance agent, but um, 
how, how what is it like the grind as a dancer because i always said like well how can you ever get to the foreground you're always playing in the background you're always playing behind someone else but is there a, a real career out there for a dancer and did you feel like you had to abandon part of that and well obviously you had acting in your in your back pocket as well but how what is the grind like for a person that's just only chasing a dancing career you know, that's that's actually a really interesting statement. I'm trying to figure out how to properly word this for you. So the grind for dancers, you know, dance is now this day and age, you know, we're here in 2021. Dance is massive. It is now the, in my opinion, it's the international language. You know, math and music have always been something everybody celebrates and uses, but dance is worldwide now. Everybody either watches it, wants to do it, takes classes, is performing it. I mean, I know grandmas that hit me on the street that are like, oh, you know, they get down. You know, I, I see it all the time. Um, but the grind, you know, as a dancer, it's, it's, it's tough, I think. It's not tough to do the dancing part of it, but it is tough in the fact that you walk into a room, whether you're white, whether you're black, whether you're a blonde girl that has, you know, the six foot, whether you're blue eyes, brown hair, whatever it is, you walk into a room and you see 50, 60, 150 more of you in the mm, same room. Right. And they're all good too. Yeah. And, and they're all good, you know, and that's the thing. People come out here to, to do that. So it's, then it becomes, I think the grind in Los Angeles is a, you got to put yourself in front of all the people, you know, constantly take classes, constantly go to auditions, but it's also, in my opinion, the blonde spikes were a very big part of me Right. is you have to find something that makes you stand out and unique. And it could be anything, but you have to walk into a room and see 50 other homies that look just like you and go, what am I going to do to separate myself from the pack? Otherwise, you just are the guy, like you said, in the back of the room, it looks just like everybody else. It's like mm -hmm. a cattle call, it feels like. So right. the grind is, is tough, um, but you know this, man. You're an actor too. You get this. The grind is just as tough as acting because you can have all this talent, but you walk in, they're like, I don't like the way you smile. Boop, you're gone. You know what I mean? Like it's, I think the grind, I, I, give, I give credit to all of it because it's just as hard on, on both levels. Um, but when I came out again, I was green on all of it, man. I didn't come out to be a professional dancer. I just did it because I thought it was fun and I wanted to keep going with it. And it just happened to work out. But, you know, nowadays, I, but here's the thing. It depends on what you want to do and where you want to go. Obviously, commercially from film and TV and tours and all that is here in L.A. But the, the, the biggest grind now is once you start hitting 25, 30, 35 years old as a dancer, the longevity of a dance career, unless you're just a tour baby and go back to back tours all the time it's getting smaller because you've got these 15 year olds and these 14 year olds that are coming into the game that are YouTubers, TikTok. I was going to say TikTok. Yeah. That's they all you got to do now. Into just... this now. And they just like, you know, you're, you're standing in a, I have friends of mine that are like, man, I'm standing I stopped, in I one spot. Yeah. Yeah. They said, I stopped dancing. I stopped going to auditions. I just choreograph now or do direct bookings because they walk into an audition and you're 35 years old and you look down the line and you're, you're dancing next to 15, 16 year olds, you know? And you're like, what happened? You know, because everybody's dancing now and everybody's good. These kids are forced to learn things via computer, via, via satellite, whatever it may be. And so classes still exist. And of course we hit a pandemic that wrecked everything. And you see these kids, I mean, you've heard this, there's so much talent that started out just by teaching themselves or learning online and between Google and YouTube and TikTok now, anybody can do it. It's just a matter of just having that grind in your heart. So we got to know, are you on TikTok? Are you busting moves on Yo, there? I knew or? you were going to ask me the question. Are you I doing, look, not, is, it, no. is it this one? Look. <laughs> no, I did. I, you know, it's funny. I only have done a handful of TikToks and I wasn't even on my TikTok account, although I do have one and I look at stuff. I've only ever done a couple of TikToks that was with my niece. And it's one thing you'll learn about me is as much as I'm always the, the bad guy, I'm a goof. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a lovable teddy bear goof. I'm always joking. I'm always acting a fool being an idiot on TikTok with my niece. I've, I'm not a TikTok guy. I don't know if it's my age. I don't know if I just didn't want to do it, but I did not hop on the bandwagon. Nah, it, yeah, I get, it might be a generational thing. Cause I can't whoa. get into it either. It's just too whoa. goofy dancing whoa, whoa. into a screen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> What's up? Whoa. What's up? Mine's like, I'm a oh, TikToker. Wait. <laughs> we got Leave a youngin', has we got one, youngin around Leave here. Leave has one TikTok and that one TikTok he's dancing. <laughs> no, I got a couple. Wait, I got a couple. I got a couple TikToks. Well, the main one is the one where you were dancing. So, okay. What, okay. What was I doing? Was it uh Ricky Morty? The, the Cardi. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I did the Cardi challenge. I did. Do okay. That. You did the Cardi challenge. Okay. I did the okay. Cardi, but I did that with a bunch of uh, all that cast members and but um, child you were star dancing. friends. I killed it though, right? I killed my part. 
That's all that matters. Uh, <laughs> I held it down. I'll um, tell you, on, I'll have to on admit the, the one that I did, the one that I did do, I hate to admit this, but my niece it. got me to do it and oh. she taught it to me. She, she taught it to me, oddly enough, was the, um, I'm a savage. Mm-hmm. Classy. Well, yeah, I had everybody. to learn okay. that. I learned it and did it with my niece. And I was like, it's going to pop up somewhere. I'm going to be shot. But it was, yeah, I did it. Oh, we might have to throw it in right here. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I ain't going to lie. TikTok, it is hella embarrassing, but it is a way to connect with the younger generation. So every once in a while, I got to step out there and, you know, get my Rick and Morty on or uh, yeah. whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? But um, so, yeah, I mean, so is it killing the dance? So you're saying you don't, you don't think it's killing the dance scene, but it's just changing everything up. I don't I don't think it's killing it. You know, I people ask me all the time, you know, do you think that the uh, do you think the market in the industry and dance is is oversaturated? Is it too much? Because now there's I mean, there's so many competition shows, there's TV shows, there's, it's mm-hmm. in every, every I mean, they just I was watching an episode. My friend is choreographing for the, the Fuller House, the new Full House. Right. And there's constantly dance stuff on there all the time. And so. You know, do I think it's it's butchering it? Do I think it's 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 hurting it? No, I don't think it is. I think it gives it a different, another realm, right? It's another aspect of dance because, you know, these are guys standing in one spot doing a handful of arm movements right. and some shimmy shakes. Yeah, I, that's the part I can't do. Like, you and can't see, even move you, your legs. Move your you damn look, legs. That's what, that's what I'm saying. You look at me and I'm like, okay, if I do a TikTok, it's going to look like a damn production because I'm going to have a widescreen shot Right. We're going to have like, we're going to be doing knee slides and, you know, all kinds of, cra- we're yeah. going to do it right. But, you know, I can't bash anybody that does TikTok because to each their own. And for some people, that's their only outlet, you know, and pandemic did this to us, man. Think about it. I mean, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen became like your favorite spot to hang out and do things. And if it was going to dance, I guess, you know, between the stove and the fridge, that's what, that's all the room you got. So you do what you do. All right, so you guys heard it from Jones. You have permission to continue with your with your shoulder <laughs> shimmies and 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 uh, what is it, camera tricks? And y'all be coming back I, I, on screen. <laughs> y'all, it's smoke and mirrors around here for sure. But um, question. I got a question. <laughs> go set, yeah. go up, Ryan. If you were to go back in time and originate a dance on TikTok, mm. what would it be? Oh God, I've never been asked that question. If I was to go back and originate a dance in TikTok. You know, I probably, it's funny, my, my boy, my boy asked me about it. I, I call him my number one fan. It's actually my girl's brother. But uh, the, I don't know if you remember, but it's, it's something you've seen it, but I would probably, because I kind of mastered it and it took a while. But I would go back to, in the final battle of You Got Served, there's a knee slide that we do that's a circular knee slide mm-hmm. on the ground. And I would probably right. use, I would probably do something along those lines and add something else to it and call it the Wade. You know what I'm uh, saying? I'd probably do okay. something along those lines okay. because for me, if I created something TikTok, it would have to be dynamic. And when I say dynamic, I need levels. I need shift and change. It would be something along those lines. So you definitely see some floor work and maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll bring back the Tootsie Roll, brother. I don't know. I'll, mm, I'll talk something okay. in there and just, and just mess some people's heads up. You know what I mean? I like that. I like that. Tootsie Roll, <laughs> I mean, Roger Rabbit. That's up my alley. You know I will say I mean? though, with your, with your little knee slide, uh, dance that you're going to be bringing back i don't know if that could be a challenge man i don't know if too many people could copy that you know that's kind of part yeah. of the rules they got it's got to be easily copied it's, cool. it's got to be, be like a great challenge for people getting injured yeah oh, see just, and that's just falling and that's down thing, is so much easier yeah that's the thing about tiktok that i mean it's it's laughable where you can all sit here and enjoy it but man i'll tell you people are fools the stuff they do just to get a laugh and a like and i'm like man mm. you're gonna break your neck for you know for really? 10 likes it makes no sense Oh, and they did. They did. Um, <laughs> and, you know, speaking of going viral and being part of great projects, it, it, am I trying to just create a transition here? Maybe. But um, you were part of a, a great movie back in the 90s. And we got to hear about how you got into this and what your role was. Uh, and that was uh, Forrest Gump. I'm sure you, you I saw knew it was going to come up. It's, you I know, mean, I, I, it's Gump, uh, man. Everybody loves Forrest. It, it, you know, I will tell you this. Saying, you know, two two films that I'm actually the proudest in the world to be a part of one being a cult film and one being an absolute world cult classic. Um, that's where it kicked off. And I knew you were going to ask it. So with Forrest Gump, um, I was the bullies that threw the rocks at him and chased him on the bikes. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so with that being said, you know, at the time, is that, wait, is that right before run for us, right? Again, this is what I was going to say. Oh, so, my bad. My, I didn't, so, I didn't so no, it it's all good. So <laughs> what's funny is that with that being, you know, again, it was a movie. It was Tom Hanks. We had no idea how big it was going to be. Um, and 
So we did it and people always, I think people know my role from that film very well for the simple fact that if we had to thrown a rock at him and chased him, the movie wouldn't exist because he would not have run. Right. He wouldn't have gone anywhere. The braces would still be on. You would not have gotten run for his run. So to be a part of that tagline and then also be a part of the tagline and you got served, which I had the tagline and said, you just mad because tonight you suckers got served. Mm -hmm. I was able to be a part of two major, major films in the world and be a part of two of the biggest taglines that people in the world know anywhere you go. Right. I mean, yeah, you did call them some suckers, man. But uh, also, you know, before and everyone wants to hear about you guys served, like I said, we're going to be talking about uh, the potential sequel. I don't know. There might, yep. there's somebody, somebody's telling me something's coming up, but um, we also got to touch on really quick. Uh, Big Mama's house. Uh, did you, did you get to work with Martin? And what was that like yeah. on that set? Once he got tackled what? by Martin. Actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Well, Prime well so, the actually the, the worst part is, so it's once again, playing the villain, the bad guy. I was uh, in that particular film. I played Anthony Bishop, um, yeah. which was the, the bad guy, computer half, hacker, surfer. And um, I did get to work with Martin's um, a couple of times filming. And uh, in the very end, I end up, he chases me. Uh, we, we shot on the Long Beach Pier in Long Beach. Now, and, before, um, wait, real, real quick, I'm going to cut you off. That was like a fantastic chase scene, I just want to say. Like, it was amazing. Was and yes. here's mm -hmm. the downside, though. And I don't want to ruin it for people, but, you know, movie magic. I did a lot of the running. Um, but I also, I did have a stunt double. So there was a couple of things a stunt double had to do. And it's not because I wasn't athletic enough to do things, but you know, with films, sometimes they're like, yeah. ah, we can't yeah. have our actors getting, I'm not Tom Cruise. They're like, we can't have you get an engine on set. We need you. But, um, you know, once again, it was, uh, Martin's great. Um, I got to spend some time with him on set and then I actually got to spend quite a bit of time with him at the, uh, at the release party and the premiere and stuff and his family. And Martin was great. He was great with me on set. My friend Mark, actually, who also who played the dad, the lead guy in that, you've seen him in a ton of stuff. He was he was like dad on set to me, man. We hung out all the time, and it was a great great experience um, working with that. It was a 20th Century Fox film, so you know, I mean, just going into it, I was like, I saw the first one. This is going to be great. Um, but of course, the bad guy in the end, I die. You know what I mean? I jump off a pier, and there it goes. But um, yeah, that was a, that was another one. And again, that was. That was when the spikes were still living large, man. I did a handful of projects with the blonde spikes and um, they wanted that surfer punk look. And I kept them until one day, man, my manager was like, they got to go. You're getting typecast. Everything you're doing is the skater punk bad guy. But um, yeah, it was, it was great, man. I can't, I can't say anything bad about Martin. He was awesome to work with. Um, the film was a, was a great success. And um, you know, as you saw, there was many more after that. So apparently, People like Martin in a fat suit, so it uh, it works out absolutely. And uh, you, you kind of um, alluded to it that th your persona is quite the opposite from the spike haired wave. That's just, I mean, he looks like a real douchebag. Let's just keep it real. But um, you know, just being around you and and um, getting to know you has been hella cool. So yeah, you guys don't be fooled by the crazy Wade uh, stare downs and and everything he got going on in these movies. Hella cool guy, but. As far as all the sets that you were able to be a part of, did you ever find one? And, and I'm hoping that you say it's you guys serve because there's a great ensemble cast there. Was there a, a particular set that really felt like home and a family to you where you were able to cultivate those relationships over time moving forward? Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you say that. My mom brought, brought up to me, you know, up, up until, and you know this again, being in the industry, that uh, up until you're like 18, unless you get emancipated, you always have to have a, a parental guardian on set. Mm -hmm. And so everything I ever did when I started filming as a kid, um, I, I'm a personal guy, man. I kind of fall in love with everybody really quickly. And whether I was shooting for two days or 10 days or whatever, I would always go through this like depression, cry, chaos at the end of any shoot, whether I wrapped with them or I just wrapped my shooting days um, because I got attached. But I will say that you got served definitely would probably be the one that I got the most attached to, but it wasn't just because of what the film did for me and how I felt about it. It was because, you know, being like, a, like I was telling you, a professional dancer and a professional actor, you have these rehearsals that you do for months, right? right? And we're talking, you're rehearsing from like seven, eight in the morning until seven, eight at night, five, six days a week, blood, sweat, and tears with these people. Then you end up living on set with them. So you end up becoming, I mean, even after rehearsals, you're going out for dinners, you're going out for whatever it is you're doing. And you just develop this, this bond that's like undescribable, you know? And, and the saddest part is I think you, for me personally, when I do a film, 
I think I end up just grabbing hold of it even tighter and more because I know that eventually it's going to end. Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to be an ending to this. The character is no longer going to exist unless there's a sequel. Um, but you have to say goodbye to it. And you're going to have to say, you get, and, and of course you'll get to work with, you know, Chris Stokes, who directed You Got Served, I've done a handful of films with him. He's been a major part of my career as an actor. Awesome. Um, so of course I've worked with his family. And, and when I say family, the, the people that he works with, his team. But You Got Served hands down because I'm working with not only I think that film, I don't remo- know the exact number, but I want to say with the, uh, the featured dancers, including the principal dancers and the crews, I think we had something like maybe 70 or 80 dancers. And at that time, when that film was released in 2004, it was the best dancers in the industry. I mean, you name one that you probably heard over can see now, they were in the film, you know, mm-hmm. or they had their hands in the choreography part of it. Some of the best b-boys in the game, some of the best jazz dancers, hip hop dancers, breakers, poppers, lockers. Whacker. I mean, we had everybody, man. And so for me, it was a blessing that I got to work with people, not only that I work with, but that I look up to that have, have, have hired me on gigs. I mean, I was, I was doing a job dancing next to people that used to hire me or that, you know, it's just, it's one of those things you just never forget. It's always in my brain. I have, I have moments where I reminisce and think, oh man, those days are amazing. And they're still kind of around now. So, so yeah, you definitely touched on it there, um, just at the tail end about the the culture experience that you got served was as far as the dance community that comes from LA. I mean, you said any and everybody was in it, including the main cast and characters in B2K, uh, Jennifer Freeman, Megan Good. I mean, these some of them are transplants to LA, but they really represented the culture at the time, and and it's the reason why it has such a huge impact on me. Uh, so we definitely want to hear a halftime song from you before we get into deep dive into the You Got Served. Uh, so, so what would you want our listeners to hear, whether it's from You Got Served or just your favorite dance song of all time? Because uh, I know you know some joints. I, I got to be honest, man, just in, in honor of You Got Served and we're talking about it today. Uh, I think uh, we have to we have to play some Joe Budden, man. We, we got to get some Joe Buttons oh, to, ju- 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 to jump off the jump I, I, off. Joe? I, think, I think we got to, I think we got to play it. Man. I mean, it that's it. That's what I'm saying. Okay. As soon as you hear it, that's the game. Right. Changer. <laughs> okay. uh, jump off Joey. All right. So uh, prime before we throw it to Joe, <laughs> um, you got anything or are we, are we heading to the break? So you said, you know, this project had tons of people on it. Tons of dancers and everything. I just want to know, if not for you guys, sir, what other project full of dancers mm. would you have wanted to do? Is there you, any that you missed any out Any era. Oh, yeah. any era. Oh, man, that's, you know, to be honest with you, that's, that's a good question. I will say, um, and I know they redid one, but to go back in the day and be a part of the original Footloose with Kevin Bacon Ooh, would, have, okay. would have been epic as a dance film because it was, again, it was one of those that was, to look at it, it was, it was edgy enough. The, the acting, eh, you know, it's a dance film. So all the acting is not going to be top notch, but you're going to have moments. But it was, it had a great cast. It had a great storyline. The, the idea behind it of dance is not allowed. This isn't what we want. You know, coming into a, coming into a culture that's completely the opposite of city culture and teaching and showing these people that life, life is, you know, outside the box. There's more to it. Right. And, you know, it was Kevin Bay. It was just one of those films that you see and you're just like, Oh, and people love it. Foot, everybody loves footloose, man. They've done Broadway shows for it. They've done TV shows. They've redone it. It's yep. that would have been one that as far as a dance film, you know, it was not hip hop, but it was just, to me, it was one of those I could watch it 10 times and I love it. You know what I mean? So I would love to have been old enough to be a part of that. But if I'm really going to go super, super deep on it, um, I definitely missed the boat on being a small kid. And I would have done I would have done Newsies in two seconds, man. So I'd say Newsies and Footloose. Okay. I definitely would have loved to be a part of those dance films. I would have I would have done it. Oh, you know what? Oh. Real quick. Since you said two, might as well make it three. You did one when you were real young. One when you were could have been in the middle. Do you have one that's modern? A modern one? Um. Yeah, you know, I probably would have come in and done I'd have done, I'd have been a part of step up. I'd have, done, I'd, have, I'd have been a part of the step up, you know, genre. Um, you know, they did I did do a step in movie called Step in. Um, but when they did Stomp the Yard, that wasn't, you know, I like Stomp the Yard, but it wasn't something I'm like, ah, did I miss the boat on that one? But I think with all the step ups, like the original step up, I could have I could have I could have stepped into that. I could have done that. 
Dope. I mean, right. and there's still time. There's still time. We're going to hear about it. You still got the moves. I, I hope. We're going to find yep. out. But uh, y'all look out for my guy, Jonesy. But for now, we got j- 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 Jump Ball. Jump Ball. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are back straight off the jump off. We're going to jump right back into this You Got Served breakdown with my guy, Chris Jonesy, um, and at, also known as Wade, not Wade Robson, who's also in You Got Served. This is Wade. The, I, I called him earlier the white man with the spikes in the tan, <laughs> the rich kid from the, <laughs> from from the OC, County. from Orange County, was on the TV of uh, just patron, uh, just giving hell to Marcus Houston's characters. Uh, what was the name of Marcus Houston's character? The big old head, Marcus Houston. No, but that would that would be Elgin. His character is Elgin. Elgin. You was giving which is, him, which hell. is the which is the you know. It's funny when you think of all the names in in the movie, but of all names, and I don't even know the history of to, as to why, because you know, uh, Chris Stokes wrote the script. There was a couple other hands in it, but. Chris Brooks wrote the script and I've never asked the question as to why Elgin was chosen. Why that name? There's got to be like an uncle that he thought of or something. Yeah. Cause that's, that's not like just a not grandpa's a name. name. Yeah. That's you not like a grandpa's name. Elgin. <laughs> you know the what I mean? Elgin is Elgin Baylor. That that's I, the only I one. Of. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, it's, it's, it's a random name for one of the best hip hop movies of all time. It's the most random name in that film. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. And uh, I mean, little issues with names in here, because like you said, your name was Wade and Wade is actually in it. And his name is Wade in there. They couldn't like switch. Well, it up. there's a there's a there's a there's a uh, I'll give you I'll give you as much as I think I'm allowed to. There's 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 been a handful of stories that I've heard behind this. But the, the one that sounds makes the most sense. Um, so when when I auditioned, I came in. And I already had blonde, spiky, crazy hair. Now, Wade had that for a long time as well, back mm-hmm. in his choreography, you know, days and stuff. And from what I understand, the Wade was actually good friends with Chris Stokes. You know, Chris Stokes used to be a manager for music groups and all that kind of stuff with IMX with Mark Houston and all them. And, you know, B2K, the whole thing. And I so a couple appara- of girl groups too, I think too. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so apparently the role of Wade was actually originally wit- written for Wade. Right. And... When Wade got the script, supposedly now, this is some hearsay, supposedly he liked the entire thing, but at the very end, when he saw that he had to lose, he's like, I'm not going to lose. This isn't going to happen. Come on, man. You're going up against B2K, so, bro. <laughs> so, so he decided to apparently say, I'm not going to do this. Well, then they started auditioning, and he was not going to be a part of the film at all. So I'm, I'm assuming they just kept the name. I auditioned. I, you know, had the blonde spikes, which I'm sure inspired Chris Stokes. He was like, oh, this kind of, you know, he saw me act and he loved me as the character, saw me dance. He's like, you're in. So I did it. And then somehow along the ways, Wade gets signed back on to do the film as the host at the end. Mm-hmm. And there's a part, if you watch it, if you go back and watch the movie, because a lot of people have asked me that question. If you go back and watch that final battle when he's introducing the crews and he says, let's give it up for Wade's crew. And as he says it and he points to us, if you look at his face, there's a bit of a like, it's kind of like a smile slash what am I saying slash what the like it's one of you just have to watch it and you'll see what I'm talking about where there's a moment that he goes, let's give it up for what Wade's like it's I don't know how to do it, but if you see it, you'll make it'll make sense. So, yeah, he was a part of it, which was great because I've worked with Wade. I've known him for years. Um, he's a great guy, incredible dancer, talented times 10. I mean, he's a, he's, he was the protege of all time. Right. Um, but that, if that helps you out at all, that's, that's what I know to be the story behind the, the reason there's two ways in the same film. I'm satisfied. It sounds good to me. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad, you know, we're here talking with you though. Oh, we're going to call you the real Wade right now. All right. Perfect. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so Wade, as we know, throughout the movie, I mentioned you're a master recruiter. But you start off, you trying to dupe my guy Elgin and um, Omicron's character, Omarion, no, <laughs> the variant. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to try to do both of them out of $5,000. You know you rich and you know they didn't have it. Right. And then on top of it, you had to cheat and grab Sonny. And Sonny was out there. He didn't have nothing on how Omarion was doing. I'm going to just say, Sonny, you was lacking a little bit. But I'm sure that's part of the scene that, you know, they couldn't have him showing up, Marcus Houston and everything. But what what was it like? <laughs> have you ever 
what is it like stealing moves? Have you ever seen anything I've, like this I've, in I've, real no, life? I've, you know what's funny is I've never I've never stolen, you know, as far as dance right. moves or anything. I've never stolen anything, no, which is kind of crazy because people do all the time and there's no really really copyright to patent anything in dance. But, you know, it's interesting with the um, – there's a helicopter coming across. Um, with – with that whole situation, it's interesting because I remember reading it in the script. You know, I remember I got the sides for the auditions and then finally they were like, you're in, we love you. You know, and you know this, there's multiple changes in scripts. You get the green pages and the pink pages and the blue pages. Mm -hmm. But I remember the original script, I remember reading this and I personally, I was, I was confused with the whole me stealing somebody because I already knew, I mean, I was already douchey enough by coming in, rolling up in my fly car at the basketball courts in the hood with these guys who literally can barely afford a cheeseburger and I'm rolling up in my fly car with my fly outfits, tossing out Mustang, challenges, yeah, Mustang, you know, and I'm trying to get them for 5,000, which, okay, it makes sense as far as a, a battle, a challenge. Sure. No one, they didn't have it. But then for me to come in and just steal one of their homies, I went, <laughs> God, this is like, this guy really sucks. Like this character, he's a douchebag, but I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? I mean Alter ego. Indeed. I get to play it. So I mean, and it kind of speaks to should should dancers be able to patent moves like you see what's going on in like uh, Fortnite and the, there's so many uh, marketing campaigns that come actually from dancers and you see you see them get ripped off all the time. Yeah. Um, do you are you part of that community where people are looking to fight for those type of rights? Yeah, it's interesting. There's you know, there's this thing called um, a lot of people you know out there don't, that listen to this that probably don't know this. There's obviously there's SAG and there's AFTRA for the union for theatrical and stuff. There's a there's a, a company, it's not a company, it's an organization called Dancers Alliance, and it's a um, it's not a union. It's like an unspoken union. It is unionized. There's dancers that are all a part of it. We have spokespersons and presidents and all this, but it's not something that there's not a there's not an actual union for it, right? But like if you go, if you book a dance gig, your agent's going to say, we want you to pay Dancers Alliance rates. So there is like a union for them. Um, and with this union, they have these, they have get togethers all the time. They have big events and stuff. There, there are people out there fighting for that because it happens. You know, it's, it's kind of hard in the dance world if somebody says, I did this cool knee drop, right? Or somebody that, you know, created the old school lockers and everything. And hip hop, honestly, in my opinion, everything originated from the streets and it did come from the original lockers, the original poppers, the original whackers, the breakers, the boogaloos, all, all these original people, they started and it evolved. Um, taking a move and altering it is one thing to take something and claim it as yours is a whole nother ball game, right? Um, it happens all the time. And there is, as far as I know, we're still fighting for it, but there's nothing out there. There's no consequences for somebody to take something other than, you're burning a bridge. You might have some, somebody coming at you. You know, if you're trying to be a dancer and you get caught doing this, you'll never work. But as of right now, there's nothing out there. But I do think that there should be some form of some copyright, some form of, you know, copycat, whatever this is. Because dance is just like any other thing. It's a job. It's an art. And it's something that people work really hard at, man. And, you know, that kid, like you brought up on Fortnite, the kid that did that on the, was it Katy Perry or whatever, the, whatever the, the stage was that did it. And they jacked it from him, but it was his. He made that. The floss was his move. Right. And so it, there are people out there fighting for us to get it done. Um, but I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. I think dance is too big, brother. It's too big. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and, you know, I mean, and, and definitely don't want to put any shade on on the, the projects of, of, of you guys served at all. But you can see that they took a lot of the moves literally right from the clown dancers and put them right into the movie. It's great that you guys had, it sounds like you guys had the entire LA community to like give them their props at the time. So that's right. what they would obviously that they would hope for and look for. So, right. and, but at the same time, you know, you, you want, you want them to use your moves. It's just hopefully one day we'll set up some type of way for everyone to get credit and paid the to way get they the credit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's one of it's, And the thing is too, it was really crazy that I loved, you know, you brought up earlier about being, you know, with family and, you know, being with all these people, amazing people in these surroundings for the film, you know, we had Dave Scott, who was the quote unquote executive choreographer. Right. Um, but then you take, you're in these rehearsals, you're locked into these, these studios for hours on end. And you're doing this choreography on breaks, you're messing around, you're playing around, your people are throwing things. You can't take 70, 80 of the best dancers in the game, stick them in a room, tell them to dance and expect not things, collaborations to not happen, things right. to mold. Somebody to say, oh, I did this. Oh, let's mix this with this. Let's change this up. 
I mean, that was what made it so so unique at the time is it was just a it was a literal blend of everything, man. There was just a it little was. bit of everything in one film. You know, nowadays it's just you had Rise. It was all the crumping and the clown dancing. Right. You had you know, you have these these movies that are nothing but jazz or you have West Side Story that's about to come out, which I can't wait to see. I can't believe I haven't seen it yet. Um, but, you know, that you got served was such an eclectic mix. Well, yeah, no, you guys had the break. I mean, the break dancing is very prevalent in this. And, you know, some of the highlight moments are definitely breaking. But then, like you said, you have they have crit walking. They got clown dancing. They got a little bit of crumping. They have like traditional street choreography. Um, and every single part definitely plays its part. Like uh, I can't. In fact, what was one of your favorite moves? If you could. I me- remember when they had uh, what's in the uh, Orion flip everybody off and they was. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. My, that was my, awesome. fa- my favorite one, and it was actually used as part of the trailer. There's a you have to go back. It's in the um, it's in one of the final battles when we're wearing the sh- the the velour jumpsuits, the Adidas velour su- jumpsuits. But it's the one where we're all doing something. We're rocking, and I can't remember the song we're using. But there's a scene where all the the dancers line up in front of us, and me and Robert do this like huge butterfly jump over the top of them, mm-hmm. and land to the floor. I'm a I'm an athletic guy, man. I love to move. I love to groove. Um, I'm I've, I'm very proud to say that I'm I'm trained in most styles, um, including technical aspects of jazz, tap, ballet, all of that, all the way up to hip hop, break and lock and popping. Um, but I'm very athletic, so I love anything that puts my body to an absolute challenge and beat down. I mean, I'm almost forty, and my knees. I'm surprised I'm still walking, bro, because um, mm-hmm. I beat myself up. But that was one of my, my favorite battles. Where believe it or not, we're actually in the end. Um, there is the one scene though where you see me clown walking, bro, and they're all on the ground, and I'm the one that's doing the jump, lifting it up top. Oh, it is, oh no, you had a mean hill toe. You was going. I had a, <laughs> I we were, we were, was we, going were crazy. we were up, and, and I was doing it. Believe it or not, on set in the in the warehouse that we shot downtown LA, I was actually doing that as a joke. And Dave was like, "I like it. Let's keep it." And Chris came in and was like, "Yeah, let's do this. Let's make this an isolated shot. We'll use you because it'll be a good dynamic during that battle scene." Because of course that's up there. Yeah, you were jumping we, up there. We high, up yeah. there. Like I said, anything athletic, man, I love it. I've I've used I've used that to my advantage in multiple multiple cases. So, dope, dope. And I'll just say one of my favorite moves of yours. I mean, oh, <laughs> the silly face. <laughs> Well, y'all, hey, oh, I yeah. didn't. Now, nah, that's one I stole for sure. Look, I was using that <laughs> in all my battles for sure. Me and the homie Mike was killing with that one. Um, is that something you guys came up with, or did you have actually? The help I got to uh, give you that was uh, Robert Hoffman that played Max. That was him. Yeah, because he he had quite a bit of choreography um, with the uh, with Wage Crew. Um, he put it because Robert is a very he's an incredible dancer. If anybody follows him, he's a great guy, good dancer. Um, and he's uh, again technically trained, but what's what makes Robert awesome? Robert's a big goofball too, and a lot of his choreography can. He has these gimmicks. He does all these gimmicky fun things. You know what I mean? Something. That, and that was one of those. We were all sitting in rehearsal, and he's like, "Let's try something." And we all stood in front of each other. And he, Robert, if you, he's got a, a website, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called PunchRobert.com or something. But anyways, he's always doing dumb shit. And mm-hmm. it was one of those things. We were all playing around, and we looked at it, and then we all did it together in the mirror, and we went, "This could work." This dope. could work. And then it became part of one of the dancers, one of the, one of the routines. And uh, you, you mentioned Dave Scott a couple of times. How famous of a choreographer is he? Because I, is he, did he do all the B2K stuff? Or? He's, yeah, that's where he got from my, I don't know the history before B2K, but I know that's how I met him. He was doing B2K stuff. He started out with them. Um, and I know he had some other artists that he was working with. I just don't know mm. who really, I don't know the history. Um, but B2K was a big deal. That's how he got involved with Chris Stokes. That's how he got involved with the film, obviously. And that obviously, took him to the top and he's for a while he was working with a ton of artists i know he was still teaching a ton traveling the world doing all kinds of things and um yeah he's he's still in the game and gonna be part of you know upcoming projects and just keeping it moving man he's still i mean everybody even though everybody's getting older the one thing i will say is and you know this you're a dancer man if there's one thing that keeps you young keeps you in the game keeps you feeling good keeps you fit dance does it bro it no, really no. does. I know 60 year olds that are still throwing down and can, and can throw down with me in two seconds. You know what I mean? So nice. 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 Prime. You got anything? I, I know you had to watch some of these dance battle scenes. Man. Olds, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they be getting down, down, down. All right. So. Uh, so 
now we've gone through a whole lot of our favorite moments from you guys served if you guys haven't seen it definitely go back and watch it cold classic the story is amazing a little saint is all up in the mix uh and then there's this whole bad this is the main antagonist right here going to, up against marcus houston going up against omicron um <laughs> my guy omarion and if you want to see a, a real a real professional on both the acting and the dancing tip this is your man right here uh, I must that. say, though, we've talked about a sequel. You've, you've given me some information and confidence. Hopefully okay. we can talk about this just a little bit. We got to know I, uh, uh, what's what you going to be doing in the sequel. Do you I, still have the moves? That's my I main can, question. I can give I can do I, I just I still do have the moves. Yes, um, I can give you a little bit because um, everything is in in the pre exist pre production part of things right now. Um, so I can't give away too much. But just just know that. Um, I will say you got served is not dead. You got served is still alive hey. and um, winners will take all. I will, I will leave mm. you with that saying that um, there's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of great talent and um, yeah, keep your eyes and ears open. I don't want, I don't want to spoil too much. Just know that things are not over yet. Now I don't want to get too specific because like we said, the original cast, amazing. I mean, even from some of the cameos, uh, you got Steve Harvey, Lil' Kim, uh, so many people popped up in, in these movies. Can you put a percentage on how many cast members we'll get back, whether it's 5%, 10%? We don't want to ask about too many specifics, but just how many I'm people are we getting back from the original? I'll give you like a 50%. How's that? Hey, sound? I think that sounds amazing. That's it. It sounds okay. like a good sequel in the making. If you ask the thing me. Is, here's, here's what I'm going to tell you about, about a sequel for a movie like this. Um, what I'm, when I am, when you think about you got served, you know, it's, it was a movie back in its, back in its day. Um, it, it was, it was groundbreaking for the simple fact that nothing else, we had nothing like that, you know? Um, and what's cool about it is to this day, with a sequel, you will have um, all these people that, that watched it back when, I mean, I've met people on the streets that were like, that are now in their 20s, right? That are like, man, you're the reason I started dancing, bro. Like, I saw this movie and it got me hyped. And so you're going to have this generation of people that are going to go see a sequel. Absolutely. But they're also going to bring their little ones, their cousins, their friends mm -hmm. that don't know about it to come. And because a sequel will be current to the times, but also have enough of what it used to be in there, it's going, it's going to create an atmosphere for everyone in the theater to A, love it, B, walk away happy and excited, and C, want to dance even more. Oh, yeah, and I don't, I don't want to do too much speculating, but I'm hoping that, and, and you mentioned the new generation coming up, that you guys are going to be incorporating some new talent. I'm sure oh, yeah. there's a whole TikTok community out there that's just dying to get into this. Hopefully y'all can move your legs, all right? Ain't no <laughs> non-leg dancing in this movie, all right? <laughs> well, and this, this is the thing, too. This is the thing. You know, originally, when it was when it was created, it's the original You Got Served, man. You got to think about this. There's, um, there's it was you know, like I said, there was an executive choreographer and then a trickle down effect of more choreographers and then a ton of dancers. So it was just one huge collaboration for lack of a better, you know, to be honest with you. Nowadays, you've got so many people out there that are established, that are able to create, that are, you know, it's like you, you look at, for instance, breakdancing is still going to be relevant. It's still there, you know, in the world. You look at breakdancers and you're like, I mean, for crying out loud, it's going to be in the Olympics. You know what I'm mm, saying? Right. So you look at it and you're like, oh my God, he just did 17 head spins and he just did this. What else could they do? And then you watch another battle or you see something on TV. You're like, I mean, they're, they're just shy of flying. You know what I'm saying? Right. So with, with knowing where things are evolving and going there to have a fill, the fill, you know, it, it, it can't be shorter than two hours. I can tell you that because mm. you gotta, you gotta have enough dance. And that was the one thing I will say about you got served. Unlike, a lot of the other dance films and with a sequel that will be kind of the same is, you know, you got served whenever you'd watch the film, you'd have enough acting. You're like, yeah, but I'm watching a dance film. And then they throw some dance in there and you'd be like, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. And then you're like, wait, but I need storyline. They, they paced it. Well, you know, mm -hmm. there was just enough dance and just enough story. The story was simple, very MTV generation, easy to understand. So that being said, a sequel is going to follow that same formula. I mean, let's be honest. Every dance film pretty much follows the same formula. Yeah, There's not so really a much, <laughs> much outside the box. Um, but I can tell you um, that with a sequel, 
it, it's gonna be amazing. So and, and, and if you guys haven't seen the first one, you know the the dancing is is great. It's good for the time. It represented the time, and I'm you know I'm excited that to for the prospect of them to do that same thing again because uh, a lot of times you know sometimes. Uh, honey you know could be a little bit behind the time she's like doing this right uh but when it comes to you guys serve those are moves that were actually going on at the time like you said they they really cultivated a great culture of dancing right there so and so i'll just say i'll just put this out there if you guys are looking for any instagram dancers no not me not me uh king of spain <laughs> i'm gonna just put out that that name because he's he's a good one so um yeah look out for king of spain but uh we we definitely got to touch on some of the things you got going on now outside of you got served yeah uh, before we get out of here but prime what you got for us i have one question what's up and it's just i'm sure it's probably a given mm-hmm. will the hair and the mm-hmm. look return yes. okay all right the bleach is coming back i, I will right. tell you i will tell you this i had to on that note this is actually really funny you say that um, I did a film with Chris Stokes called, this is actually, this is a good plug for this. I mean, it was, it's been a couple of years now, but it's a great one to see. It's called Battlefield America. It was basically, you got served with little kids. And Marcus and I were in it playing completely different characters. Um, and we're basically the coaches of these crews. Cause it was basically, you got served, but for little kids. It's the best way to put it. Um, and when I, when I booked it with Chris Stokes, you know, I played a completely different character, completely different, like name, everything. And he goes, can we bring like a like blonde, but just a different version of the blonde, maybe a messier look, maybe something in the hair just to bring, because people are going to see your face. They're going to see dance and it's going to draw them to it. And I went, okay, let's do it. So we did it. And um, yeah, it'll, I, I don't know if the, the, the 1990s, early 2000s, big, long, crazy Orange County spikes will be back like that. Mm-hmm. But I but I can tell you, blonde will have to be a part of it all because it's. Oh yeah, you're you just know, gonna have a fade on the side now, That's bro. It. It's, it, I was just gonna say a fade. I'll have a little more beard and you know yeah, than just yeah. a goatee. Because I mean, think about it, man. It really is one of those things. You think you got served and you say blonde spikes. People know exactly what you're talking about. So that's way and not that way. The real way. way. Real way. <laughs> real way here. Um, and so yeah, before we close out, man, just uh, tell people what you got going on in that uh, amazing backyard uh, yard of yours. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, comedy nights that I'm hoping to be a part of one of these days. I'm gonna come abs- through. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's cool with uh, you know, film stuff is going great, man. Keeping it moving, still teaching and choreographing. You know, uh, when I had you know, pandemic kind of threw things off for a loop, but working with some new artists, um, so that's still great. Um, I love teaching. You know, something I love doing is keeping you know keeping it real with the kids. Um, at conventions and studios around the world. So um, got that going on as far as, as far as the career career and keeping it moving. You know, you're going to see me. There's, you know, Chris Jones is always going to be here. And then on the flip side, one of my favorite things I'm doing right now, I got to say this. Um, so my, my girl, um, Brittany, she, uh, she's in the industry kind of on a different realm on the other side of it. You know, she's a, a videographer, photographer. She's into fashion. She marketing, producing. She does everything. She's amazing. Um, but we've teamed up together and I kind of, she, I, I say I teamed up with her because she started it and did it, but now we've got this, um, this amazing thing happening at, at our home that we've, uh, created this amazing backyard and, uh, we use it for events. We rent it out all the time for music videos, which is where I met you, right. um, music videos and events and stuff, but we also do comedy. We produce comedy shows and we have the big stage that's across the pool in the backyard that we do the big shows and then we do open mic nights every Wednesday. We, we do that. We have the garage set up a little more intimate and amazing. And um, in fact, we've actually, I wish there was a way I could show you the whole backyard, but this weekend we have a really cool fundraiser we're throwing and it's just, um, yeah, man, it's something that's also, you know, as you and I were talking earlier, I'm one of those guys. I don't like to, I can't sit still too long unless I'm watching a movie. I'm a dancer. I'm always moving. I'm always doing something. I'm always got a project. I just, I love keeping things, you know, in the works and, this has become another like passion of mine is producing, you know, being behind the scenes. My girl and I are talking, we want to write, we want to do more video stuff together. But um, right now I'm still here, man, keeping myself relevant and in the scene, in the game. And um, I'm here. Well, and if people want to see that backyard, give them the Instagram so they yeah, can check it the, out. It, the Instagram handle for that is club B nightlife, C L U B B nightlife. Check us out. Um, you can obviously hit me on all social media platforms at Jonesy, J O N Z I E seven, three, six Jonesy seven, three, six is my handle. And, um, yeah, you, this is not the last you'll see of me, man. You'll, you got some more films coming out that you're going to be pretty excited about that. We kind of touched on a little bit and, um, 
yeah, just make yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully we can have you back. Uh, I mean, if you don't get too Hollywood on us, you know, Wade is about to be out of here, baby. No, nah, <laughs> you know that I can't, I can't get too Hollywood. I got too many people around me that keep me. Again, I'm from the south, man. I got people that'll punch me in the face real quick if I get too big for my britches. So, um, keeping it moving, keeping it popping, and I'm just glad, you know, Prime, I got to meet you and hang out with you a little bit, and. Leon, man, my homie, I'm so, I'm so glad we made this connect and we go, this will not be the last. And I'm aside gonna, I'm from, be, as, I'm be aside at from the podcast, night. I want you to open mic night. I I'm want you be, here. Hang with me and Brett, bro. It's time for me to get up back on that stage. And um, just while we're piecing out, you can find me at LeeBoyTV.com, at LeeBoyTV on all socials. Uh, also check out Magical Life Media where we're doing some Disneyland stuff. You know, I got to be with the fam. We do our thing. Uh, so catch us at the parks on, on that page as well. And yeah, just tap in with your boy. Hopefully you'll have some footage of me on stage uh, soon at Club B. And, Absolutely. Uh, and Prime, what, what you got for us? Close us out. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at KVNG Prime Time. A uh, podcast page is Prime Nostalgia Pod. And if you want, you know, y'all can follow 80s, 90s, and 2000s because I do that too. And I don't got nothing else to say. I'm, I'm just here. A A A. So yeah, this won't be the last. You'll see me and Jonesy together. It's been a, a blessing. Thank you for coming to, to uh, bless the the program and, and blessing our our platform. And y'all go see you guys serve once it comes out. You heard it here first. Now Absolutely. go check it out and support. All right, let's do it. Thanks for the support. I love you guys, man. I'm glad I could do this, Leon. I'll hit you later. You guys are All amazing. Right. Prime. You take care of this boy. You guys be good. And on that prime time is all the time. All the time, baby. We out. Thanks for tuning in to the Prime Nostalgia, the podcast dedicated to entertainment from childhood. That's 80s, 90s, the latest 2000s. Because Prime, you know it all. And Lee Boy be wow. And he's from all that. Dropping gems for you to find. So that's orange, that light is lying. Prime time is all the time. We talking about the classics and there's so many. That's Lee Boy TV and P-R-I-M-E. Wow.